Tuesday with the geek, Ismail Akwe. I don't want that to stay. <laughs> <laughs> it's already but stayed. It's, it's, it's a great Tuesday. And, uh, uh, Jerry is very stubborn. Really. He is very He's stubborn. Really, He's really very stubborn. stubborn. Yeah. yeah. No, I have <laughs> given him, I have made him the geek, and uh, you are. You are declining. Why? He doesn't like it. Well, I don't like it, and it's the viewers like it. It's they a terrific that, they know tech that you are Tuesday. Huh? Good morning to you all. Good morning. Well, it's another election day in Africa, and Liberia is voting today. We will, or Liberia is not going to follow the mistakes of other African countries like uh, Congo, Ethiopia, Chad, and Uganda to shut down internet and the social media. It rather does a country more harm than good. It costs more money and doesn't stop electoral vices and dissent. Now to a company that is losing money, Yahoo has announced that the August 2013 hack of its systems affected all 3 billion accounts. So if you have an email ad account with Yahoo, then you have been hacked also. The free email service said last year that 500 million accounts were breached. It later re reviewed the number to 1 billion. The hack occurred two years before it was detected during a sale negotiation with Verizon, which was expected to buy Yahoo at $4.8 billion. It was known after a cyber criminal claimed it was selling millions of Yahoo users' data for $1,800. The stolen information included names, email addresses, telephone numbers, dates of birth, among others. Yahoo says unprotected passwords, payment card data, or bank account information were not stolen because those were stored on a different system. A group of Yahoo users have filed a class action suit against the company seeking damages for gross negligence over the data breach. The FBI is investigating the hack, which Yahoo believes was orchestrated by a state-sponsored actor. Four months ago, Verizon Communications acquired Yahoo for $350 million instead of the $4.8 billion initial value. If you are watching this segment now, then you are one of the lucky few who will have first-hand information on how to spot compromised ATM machines that steal credit card details. Card cloning is real. The technology used is simple, cheap, and almost invisible. The criminal superglue a small card scanning device onto the card slot of an ATM. It resembles the regular card slot to avoid detection. When you slide your card into the slot, the fake card reader scans your information and sends it to a laptop nearby via a Bluetooth connection. This means the scammer is nearby. This alone doesn't allow the criminal to gain full access to your account. They need your PIN number. They get this by strategically placing a camera by the ATM to detect your PIN. Some also place a fake keypad over the real keypad to trace what buttons you punched. When, when they get hold of all of your information, you know what happens to your account. It is emptied without your knowledge. To avoid being a victim, check the card slot machine to see if it's flashing the green LED light. If it is red or invisible, do not use the ATM and report it to the bank immediately. Also, when the card reader is wobbly, loose, or looks damaged, do not use the machine. Try as much as possible to cover your pin. We, we tend to cover it from people close to us, but you don't know which camera has been placed there, and you have to cover it entirely so no one can pick your pin and steal your money. So that's a few tips there for you to save your money at the ATM machines. Finally, there was an explosive report from Indonesia where a man's Samsung smartphone exploded in his breast pocket. His shirt caught fire after the explosion at a hotel last week. All of this was filmed by the hotel's CCTV camera. Have a look. So that's the man there, as you can see in the camera, and he was checking his phone and then it exploded. That's a sad uh, video of the 47-year-old Yulianto at a lobby of the hotel where he works. He told local media that the phone was a Samsung Grand Duos model. The explosion occurred while he was using Wi-Fi, GPS, and the Bluetooth 
functions at the same time, he told the police. This caused the phone to overheat and subsequently go up in flames. Samsung responded to the explosion quickly by saying that the device did not have original batteries. Its batteries were manufactured by an unauthorized third-party company, Samsung added. The Grand Duos was released in 2013 before the, Samsung, before the infamous Samsung Galaxy Note 7, which suffered explosions due to faulty batteries. They were later recalled. Thank God the man only sustained minor burns. The lessons learned, don't overuse your phone to the point of overheating. Let it rest. Also, use the phone's genuine or approved batteries to avoid serious incidents. Stay safe. My name is Ismail Akwe. This is SciTech.